This is a 67-year-old man who presented to us with symptoms of chronic intestinal obstruction. The patient was operated upon anterior resection for cancer of the rectal sigmoidal junction two years before. He shows a severe neoplastic stenosis of the colorectal anastomosis. The patient had multiple unresectable liver metastases. The thin pediatric nasogastroscope is advanced through the colorectal stenosis. The nasogastroscope is advanced well above the stenosis for at least 30 centimeters. The guide wire is inserted through the nasogastroscope and its advancement is followed visually. In such a way, it is possible to avoid lesions to the colonic wall, which above the obstruction is usually dilated and partially ischemic. The correct position of the guide wire is confirmed fluoroscopically. The pediatric nasogastroscope is removed measuring the length of the stenosis. This measurement will help to choose a stent with adequate length. The guide wire is left in place. A regular size colonoscope, better if it is a large channel colonoscope, is introduced distally to the stenosis. Through the previously inserted guide wire, the stent apparatus is brought above the stenosis. The progression of the stent apparatus is followed fluoroscopically and endoscopically. The final position of the stent is confirmed radiologically visualizing the stent itself. The outer plastic containing the stent is slowly removed. An assistant maintains the correct position of the stent apparatus. The stent is in place. The guide wire is removed. The correct position of the stent is confirmed radiologically. The colonoscope is advanced through the stent up to its proximal margin to verify any possible kinking of the stent. We perform at the end of the procedure an abdominal x-ray. The stent has usually an hourglass shape. It will take at least 24 hours before the stent is completely expanded.